During the early years of the AIDS epidemic, the activist community who had some very important issues that needed to be discussed were not being listened to by the powers of government. The government did not openly embrace the community of people who were infected. In fact, some would say, and I think with some truth to it, that they were almost ignored early on in the epidemic. People were, including the President of the United States at the time, was very reluctant to even use the word AIDS uh, at that time. I, because I was working in the field, was perceived as the face of the federal government. So they began to be a number of demonstrations, which if you look at them, were quite uh, confrontative, theatrical, and frightening to many people. And certainly people at the NIH were very concerned that people would be coming on campus demonstrating, blocking the roads, putting off smoke bombs, uh, in order to get attention to some issues that were very valid issues. So because I was out there, going into the community, trying to understand better. I was the face of the federal government. So they started demonstrating against me. And they came to the NIH with burning me in effigy and signs saying, Dr. Fauci, you are killing us. Please get drugs to us, we're dying. As if I were preventing drugs from getting to them. They thought that the government was not acting fast enough and they were mixing up my role as a scientist for studying HIV with the regulatory role of the FDA. So to them, the government was just one big government. So we're not getting the drugs we need. The FDA is playing hardball in their regulatory issues, and the government is not putting enough effort into the developing of drugs. Therefore, you, me, the face of, of the government, is to be blamed, and we're going to come after you. I started to listen to what they were saying and try to separate it from the theater. And the theater being the strange dress and the smoke bombs and the lying down in the middle of roadways and saying, what is the message that they're trying to get to us? And if you listen to the message, the message made sense. So one of those days at the peak of a very uh, emotional confrontation right on the NIH campus, the police had had enough and they were getting ready to arrest everyone. And I did something now in, in retrospect is probably one of the smartest things that I've ever done is I went downstairs from the safety of my seventh floor office and went to the chief of the NIH police who was working with the county police and said, don't, please don't arrest them. Pick out five or so of their leaders and have them come up to my office so we can start a dialogue about how we can get away from this confrontational issue and go and actually talk about things that we can help each other with. And the activists who a moment before were lying down on the road and throwing smoke bombs were astounded that someone from the government would even talk to them, much less invite them up to the office. And that started a dialogue that wasn't necessarily all that easy over the years, but it progressively built mutual trust with each other so that we started to get very important input on the part of the activist community into the kinds of things that impacted them. And that was the beginning of the very productive role of activism, not only in HIV, AIDS, but that model has now been used by a variety of other disease constituencies.